welcome back everybody it's rob from epic arrow and in this video we are going to focus on pbn safety and setup so to avoid google penalties you need to avoid patterns and essentially hide your pbns when you think about google basically all it is is one big computer that sends out a bot that crawls sites and the only way that your pbns are really going to get penalized is if they determine that there's a pattern with any pbns that you're pointing to a specific money site and then they're going to have someone go and manually check them after they've discovered the pattern and that's when you're going to get slapped and google is going to penalize not only your money site but it's also going to dx your de-index your pbns so to stop patterns we want to diversify domain registrars i understand that you might want to keep everything in one registrar like godaddy it makes it really simple to manage your domains but look if google looks at all the backlinks that are coming to your site and they're all coming from GoDaddy registered domains. They're going to look at them. They're going to go, ah, this is a pattern. We need someone to manually check it out and you're going to get penalized. Same thing with hosting companies. You want to diversify your hosting companies. Now you can go the cheap route with $1 hosting, but I strongly suggest that you mix in some more reputable hosts like Bluehost and GoDaddy, more ones that people use on a regular basis because all $1 hosts and cheap hosts are also going to leave a pattern. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to use bot blocking plugins or alter your HT access file. And what this is going to do is it's going to block sites like Majestic, Ahrefs, SEMrush, where people can go and find your backlinks and then they can start to look at where your backlinks are coming from and they can notice that they're PBNs. They'll compile a list of them and they'll send them off to Google and that will end up penalizing you. And I know a lot of the large SEO firms, if they're trying to rank a client, they're going to go to the first page. They're going to start looking at the um, competitor's backlinks. And if they notice that they're using PBNs, you bet your bottom dollar they're sending a report to Google. Another thing you want to do is you want to change your who is information and use private who is. Now Namecheap has a, pro a free who is privacy. And you can use that, but you don't want to make all of them private because, again, that's a pattern. So you want to change the Whois information of a domain. And there's different ways to do it. It's all different depending on the domain registrar. But what I do is I go to fake name generator. I think it's .net or .com. I'll put a link to it in the description. And it'll just give you information. So it makes it really easy for you to use real addresses and real looking names. Um, so I'll put a link to that in the description. You can hop over and check that out. And then you want to make your sites look real. Make them look as real as possible. I know PBNs typically, you know, people don't make them look real. It's kind of hard to make them look real, but the realer they look, you might even pass a manual check. And the last thing is we're going to base all of our PBNs, and I base all my PBNs off WordPress. Now you might say that's a footprint, but so much of the web today is WordPress sites. I don't know the exact figure, but it's it's really high that I don't see that it's going to leave that big of a footprint in my mind. If you want to you know, diversify even further, which is highly suggestible, you can use like Drupal and maybe you just want to create some HTML um, sites in Dreamweaver or something like that. But um, when we're using WordPress, we want to use random plugins. Uh, we want to make our page titles random, use a random URL structure, and use unique articles and, you know, unique videos and images and all that good stuff. But we don't want to be using the same exact plugins. We don't want to be using the same exact page titles, same exact URL structure. Anything that leaves a pattern, um, if you can look at it and you can say this might be leaving a pattern, then stop doing it that way. Now to move on to some advanced PBN safety, um, to save you some money, you can put more than one PBN onto a hosting account, but do not link to the money site more than once from a single hosting account. And you also try not to duplicate your links on all PBNs to all money sites. And I know that's this kind of sounds confusing, so I've drawn up a little diagram here. Okay, so we've got hosting account one, two, and three. And what I want you to remember is that hosting account one might have three PBNs on it, but they all have the exact same IP address because they're all on the exact same server. Same thing with hosting two. So PBNs four, five, and six are all in the same hosting company and PBNs seven, eight, nine are all in the same hosting company. 
So these all have the same IP address, these all have the same IP address, and these all have the same IP address. So when you're linking out from these, if you linked out from PBN 1, 2, and 3 to Money Site 1, Google's going to look at this and they're going to say, wait, there's three different sites on the same exact IP address, and it just so happens that they're all linking to the same site. That's going to leave a huge pattern. And if you start doing this from, you know, let's say you linked four, five, and six to Money Site 1 as well, and seven, eight, nine, they're going to go, wait, there's nine different sites linking from three different IP addresses. Huge pattern you're probably going to get penalized. Another thing you don't want to do, hosting account one is linking to money site one, hosting account two also, hosting account three also. So you've got three of the exact same sites or three of the exact same hosting accounts or IP addresses linking to this. And then you go ahead and do this for your second site and your third site. So Google's going to see that this hosting account or this IP address is linking to site one, the same three IP addresses are linking to site two, the same three ad IP addresses are linking to site three. So what I suggest you do, if you set your PBNs up this way, is you send maybe you wanna do hosting account one to site one and site two, and maybe you wanna do hosting account two to site two and site three, hosting account three to site one and site three. So that way the exact same linking structure IP addresses aren't set up for the exact same sites. And I hope that makes sense, but we're gonna jump back into um, PBN setup. So, when you're setting up your PBNs, you want to write or have written four articles. You wanna install WordPress, and then I always install about the same plugins. You wanna install, install a random cache plugin, a random contact form plugin, a random no comments plugin and a random bot blocker plugin. And actually bot blocker plugin is not as important because there is a plugin I'm going to show you that does cloak itself so Google can't really tell that you're using it. And another thing about that is that so many people are using bot blockers now because you would be extremely surprised at how many bots come along and um, they just use up so much bandwidth on a server that there's so many companies out there using these bot blockers that I don't think it really leaves that much of a footprint. Then you're gonna wanna create a contact page, an about us page, a privacy policy page, and a terms of service page. And please don't use duplicate content. I know it's difficult to write a privacy policy and terms of service page, and a lot of people use um, these templates out there. And that's fine if you're using a bunch, if you got like 10 or 15 different templates that you're using, then, then go for it. But if you're using the exact same template on every single website, bam, another pattern. They're gonna see that it's a PBN. They're gonna slap you. Last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create four posts. We're gonna use our articles. We're gonna integrate some YouTube videos, images, and maybe infographics, anything else you can really put in there um, to make it look like a real site. Now, once we have our PBN set up, we're gonna to look to our linking strategy, and this is how we're gonna be linking out to our money sites. Now, when we link out to our money sites, we usually only point one PBN to our money site per week. This stops from Google saying, all right, this is a, maybe a new site, and all these sites just started linking to it. You know, if you get, you know, 10 PBNs, it's gonna say, wow, where did all this authority come from? Might leave a pattern. And typically we've found that pointing one PBN to it per week, we can usually get on page one for a, a moderately hard keyword in about two to three months. Now, when you're linking out to your money site, you wanna make sure that you're varying your anchor text. Now this is a dead simple strategy that we use. So we, if we were linking out, our first link would be a branding keyword like Epic Arrow. The next link we would link out would be a URL variation. And the next link we would link out would be a keyword variation of our, of our main keyword. Then the next link would be a generic keyword. So those are our first four links. Then we jump back up. So our fifth link would be another branding. Sixth link would be a URL variation. Seventh link would be a keyword variation. And eighth link would be a generic keyword. Now, if you go through this about three times, it's going to diversify up your um, backlinking or anchor text profile. And when you're using these, make sure you mix in, you know, uh, for branding, it's okay to use the exact same keyword over and over. 
but for URL variations, keyword variation, generic keywords, mix up what keyword you're putting in there. Don't put the exact same one every single time. It's really going to diversify your anchor link, anchor text profile and help stop you from getting any penalties in Google. So now I'm out of breath. And with that said, let's jump over. I'm going to go through a fresh WordPress install. I'm not actually going to show you how to install WordPress. There's tons of videos out there. I'll find one and I'll put a link to it in the description. But we're going to go through and I'm going to show you how we go about setting up our PBNs um, in WordPress so you have an exact template to follow. Okay, so at this point, you should have your four articles written and WordPress installed. And then you're going to log into your WordPress dashboard. Now, the first thing you do when you log into your WordPress dashboard, if there's any posts in here, delete them out. And if there's any pages in here, delete those out. Then we're going to go to appearance and themes and add new. And we're going to look for a theme that has nice links on the front page and shows the posts on the front page. And you're going to want to mix this up and use a different theme for every PBN. So we'll install that and we'll activate it. Then we're going to go to plugins and we're going to start adding some plugins. So the first one we're going to add is a cache plugin. And it doesn't really matter which one you use. Just make sure that you randomize them. We're going to activate that. Then we're going to go look for, we're going to add another one and we're going to look for a contact form plugin. And I'm partial to contact form seven. It has over a million downloads. It's very easy to use. It's not going to leave much of a footprint at 1 million downloads. But every, from time to time, don't use it on every single one. Mix it up here and there. And then we are going to install a no comment plugin. Oh, we need to add it first, add new first, and then no comments. And what this is going to do is it's going to stop anybody from being able to leave a comment on the site, which we want because we're not going to be checking this very often. Then what I didn't talk about, but what I like to add is an SEO plugin. It's not mandatory, but I think it does help um, tell Google more about what your, your site is about so that uh, it's more relevant to the site you're linking to. So activate that. And then once we have that done, it's time to start making our pages. So our first page will be the contact page. And sometimes I use contact. Um, then sometimes I use contact us. It just depends. Um, I like to mix it up on sites. It shouldn't matter too much because almost everyone has a contact page. If I open this in a new link, I can grab the default contact form and just go ahead and throw it in there and publish it out. And if we preview it, it just looks like a regular old contact form. Okay, and then we're gonna go back to pages and we're gonna add another one and we're gonna do our about page. You can do about, about us, something along those lines. Just make sure you mix it up here. And you're gonna add about two to 400 words about this website. Um, just make it look real and give it a little bit of substance. Maybe put some pictures in there or something. Then we're going to go ahead and add a privacy policy. And we'll publish this one out. And all you need to do is go grab a template um, and write, write a privacy policy. Just make sure that you're not using the exact same one for every site. Um, try to find at least five to ten of them and then you can start using them on each site. And the last page we're gonna create is a terms of service page. And like I said before, you can find templates for this and just find at least five and don't use duplicate content. Now, when you're making out these pages, start filling in some of the SEO data. You don't have to fill it all in, but I would suggest that you fill a good portion of it in. Now, after we're done with that, we'll go and start making our posts. And we're gonna go copy and paste the article that I had written, it's about fishing. And then I'm gonna put like fishing 101. And this is all about fishing. 
So we're going to add a category of fishing and then a tag of fishing or how to fish. Okay. And the next thing we want to do is start adding some media to this. So we're going to add an image and I've already downloaded one and we'll put it in there and format it all nicely. We're also going to want to go through the article and format it all nicely with bullet points and bold, make it look real like a legitimate article. Okay. And then I want to add a YouTube video. So I'll go over to YouTube. I'll find something about fishing. I'll get the embed code for it. I'll go back and insert it in here at the bottom. Okay. It's a visual. And then the next thing we're going to want to do is start putting links to not only our money site, but other authoritative sites. So I'll go and find some new fishing sites. So I found this world of fishing. I'll copy that. And I'll go ahead and throw this in here. Now, the reason that we want to start linking out to other authoritative sites is because we want Google to see not only our link that we're putting in there to our site, but other sites in the industry, because then they'll say, oh, well, this site belongs because other people are linking out to these authoritative sites and also linking to their site. But typically, I don't add a link to my money site until this has been indexed in Google. So I usually give it about a week. I'll go back and check to make sure it's indexed in Google, that the page shows up in the search results. And then I'll go ahead and add my link to my money site. And I'll use that linking strategy that I talked about earlier in the video. Now, you're also going to want to block the bot. So you're going to want to install a plugin. I have a plugin called Spider Spanker. It's a paid plugin, but it blocks all those bots I talked about earlier, or you can alter the HT access file. So that's pretty much all there is to it. You just want to make this site look real. Make sure that you add all the pages we talked about, add your four posts, and then about once a month, I'll go back and add a new post to a PBN just to keep it fresh and uh, not arouse any suspicions from Google. So that's about it. Um, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, just leave them in the comment section below, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Hey, I'd like to thank you for sticking around to the end. If you'd like to go on to the next lesson, click the video on the right, or if you'd like to go back to the previous lesson, click the video on your left.